Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be looking at the part design but how to use other workbenches with the part design and how to combine those workflows. For instance I've created this fin now for pipe shell and using it in the part design to create pads and pockets in there and here we've got a knife handle complete with knife inside. So this knife is created from the part design and this handle is created from an STL file that's imported in. Updated with the part workbench we then use a part design feature in there, this knife is placed inside this handle, it's all one object and we come out and actually create a mirror of the handle and fusing it together and then we're back in the part workbench. So this is all about combining workflows and how you can utilize those workflows in there. We're going to be looking at how we do this and also some problems that can occur where you have to be mindful of how you're creating your object. So I hope you're enjoying the channel, I hope you're enjoying these videos, and let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire, and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content, and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So we're in the part workbench and what we're going to do is actually import an STL file and use it in the part design. But first we need to create a solid from that STL file and also fix the point of origin. So file, import, and I'm gonna take this knife handle, this one here, and hit open. Once that's opened, we can use some tools in the part workbench. Come down to the part, you can see this create shape from mesh. First of all, we need to select the mesh, the free CAD knife there, and part, create shape from mesh. And I'm just gonna take the defaults. Click on the original mesh, press the space bar, we can delete it. And now we're gonna work with this object. If I try to transform this, I zoom out, but you notice our point of origin is over here which makes life a bit hard for us to actually move this about. Let's fix that. Go to view, click on toggle axis cross. What we need to do is transform the original transform and move it over to the axis cross, like so. We can add some rotation in here. So I'm gonna just select rotation increments and just move that up to something like three, and that moves it in stages of three degrees. And just move this into place. Once it's moved into place and you're happy, hit okay. Now we're gonna fix this. Let's come in. We're gonna use a tool on this toolbar called Advanced Utility to Create Shapes. This tool is also known as the Part Shape Builder both the same tool. We need to click the solid from shell. And now we need to select a face, then click again, and that selects the whole object. We need to come down to create. And now we've created a solid that's got the fixed origin attached to it. So hit close. You'll see we've got two objects now. Let's hide this one or delete it. And we've got this solid. Right click, transform. And you'll see the point of origin has now moved. Unfortunately, I didn't move it down, so let's just quickly fix that. So I'm just going to delete the solid, bring back the knife, and right click, transform, and just move this down. Once you're happy, hit OK and we'll do the same solid from shell, come in and then hit create and close and hide the original or you can delete it. So right click, transform on the solid and you can see how we now have a nice shape to deal with. What we can do with that is actually pull this into the part design as something called a base feature. So let's come over to the part design. 
We can see the solid is selected. If we selected that solid and create a body, what will happen is that will be copied into there as a base feature. If we didn't select that body, let's hit delete that body and bring back the solid by pressing the space bar. It just shows and hides that. Let's create a body. And now we can pull that solid into the body. The original solid is hidden, but the base feature still depends on that solid. So if anything happens to this solid, it will be reflected in the base feature. I can use that base feature now by creating a sketch. There's quite a lot of faces on this one. So what I'm going to do is just create a sketch on one of the base planes. Let's create a sketch and I'm going to go X, Y, hit OK. It will be on the wrong side because we really need it on the bottom. So I'm going to close that, click on the sketch, map reverse, because I want to actually create something on the bottom of this handle. Click true. And now when I double click on the sketch, we're now on the bottom of that sketch. Remembering that if we start creating sketches on here, we have to be wary of where our sketch actually sits. So you can see we've got some rotation there. So we can rotate the sketch in line with this. Coming over to the model, click on the sketch, come down to attachment and changing the angle. You can see how that's changing. And we may need to change the axis and we need to place it on the Y. Set set to zero. And now we can change the angle. And also come down to the position and change the position along the Z. Now we can start sketching upon here. So I'm going to use the polyline and just creating a sketch on here. Something quite quick, just to show how we can use this. Obviously I would use an arc, but from there we can use that sketch. Come down to close. And we can pad this. This may just be above, so we can do the reverse. And we can start building up our object using the base feature and sketch it all in one go. After we've finished, we can OK that. And then we could use, say, the solid again. Come over to the part. And taking that solid and creating a mirror, mirroring that across the XY plane. Double click on the mirror and just make some adjustments. We can place it in place and then do Boolean operations against the solid mirror and the body over in the part. This also will be the last thing that will do to create the finished object. It's not only STL files you can pull into base features in the part design. We can use something from say the Curse Workbench or something that's created in the part workbench. So here I've created two profiles and a path. And we're gonna create a fin across there. So these are gonna be part of the profile that's gonna be swept across this line. We're gonna be using the curse workbench. We're gonna be using something called a pint shell. Now I need to first select the objects that I want to become profiles. So this one here and this one. So it's both our profiles. And now we take the path, control click the profiles one after the other, 
and then create a pipe shell. So we created this fin, goes across here. Click on the pipe shell, let's make this solid. First we want it as a surface, and then we come down to solid. I'm now going to go over to the part workbench. And we can come in and close this up. So around here we can use a number of options, but I'm just gonna use advanced utilities to create shapes. Face from edges. And we'll select the faces. And create. And the same for this one. Control selecting them. And we'll just quickly close this up. Hit close. Now we have the top and bottom caps to our fin. We can come over to the curves workbench. We can select the pipe shell and select the, all the faces and we'll create a solid. So this now is a solid object, which we can use in the part design. Let's come over to the part design. Click the solid and we'll create a body. That will pull that into the body as a base feature. And now we can select say, this face. This may not be a planner face, so if I create a sketch upon here, you see it's saying you need a planner face for the sketch. So okay, we can place a datum plane on here, or we could again use the base planes. So we click off and create a sketch. Click on the XY plane, nearest plane. and hit OK. We may need to flip it over so you can see how it's been placed there. We can come into the model, come down to the sketch. Map reverse is true, but this won't take effect until we come out of the sketch. And double click the sketch again. So that's on the right side now. And we can do some modifications of the placement. So click on the sketch. And we look down and see the placement is not there. We've got the attachment first. So this is the one we want to use. And we're looking at the angle. And if we look, we've got the rotation, which is around this red, which will be the X. So we need to rotate it around there. Axis X1, Z0. And now we can start changing the angle. And then come down to the position, this one here, and change the position. And we can start sketching upon here. So for instance, I can place some circles in here. Hit close. Click on the sketch and we're going to pocket that. So we've created a pocket on our surface and hit OK. And we can just continue sketching upon here, adding features as we see fit. For instance, I might want to add some more features in here and pocket these or pad these up. and build up our geometry and features on the imported base feature. Just remember that if you have an object, let's say we have a sphere, a connecting cylinder, and also we have another sphere, which I'm just gonna transform.
and we'll fusion these together we we'll make a union of several shapes and we add one more object on here let's say this object here and just change that slightly so we're going to go five five and five and transform that and what I'm looking at doing is making a planar surface in here by taking the fusion what I want to keep control click the one I want to remove and do a cut we've got a planar surface in here we have to be careful when we bring this into the part design and we start changing the underlining part so we'll create a body and bring that cut into the body if I start sketching upon this surface with a sketch and let's say we were creating a slot in here and my intention is to take material away from the inside so you can see how that's going to go. It's going to go straight through this object, this object, and this object. If we pocket that, we can see how that's been taken away. And as we move down, it moves through the objects. If I hit OK, if for instance, I took the pocket, this sketch, double clicked it, and made this too big, hit close you can see it's gone into error that's because if we look back at that sketch we're actually removing with that pocket this cylinder so we're creating a multi-body object so if we looked at this and followed it all the way down and let's move it to show you what's happening the attachment the position and we're going to be moving along the z-axis Watch what happens. You can see that our pocket has actually removed that cylinder. So I'm using that sketch just to show where that cylinder is. So it's created a multi-body object. is isn't allowed in the part design. So we just have to be wary of that when we're looking at creating objects that we're going to be using as base features in the part design and going back and editing those or editing features in the body that can take out parts of the part design objects that can create problems in the future. So I hope that's given you some quick examples of actually how to use a base feature and how to use other workbenches in the part design workflow. So I hope to see you in the next videos and I'll see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0 I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon